Good day, my little robins. Here it is. Oh, I nearly got the wrong intro, too. Good day, my little robins. It's me, Beth. Another month has come and gone, which means you guys today are getting my June favourites 2021. I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of the things that I love the month of June. Pretty self-explanatory. Before we begin, if you'd like to support me and the channel in the future, you can by clicking the like to show me some love. You can click subscribe and tap that bell to be notified of when I upload on this channel. If you'd like this video one to two days before I upload it here on YouTube, you can check out the link to my Patreon in the description box below. Enough rambling, let's just dive straight into some of my June favourites. off with music as we always do in these videos the one and only album i want to talk about only came out on the 25th of june and that is beartooth's brand new album called below i have a lot of nostalgia for this band not just because they release amazing albums but beartooth were actually the last band i saw live in 2020 before the world went into like a continuous like lockdown and for me Beartooth are a band that continue to like evolve and with the singles that we got before this album came out they were all slightly different, slightly dark, slightly catchy and from what I've read from interviews Beartooth has said that this is their darkest album to date and yeah you listen to the album and you go okay you guys are in a dark place, the world was in a dark place perfect material for writing songs. I know there has been like some 50-50 like debate on the music video for the song like The Past Is Dead. I had to make sure I got it right because compared to like two of the other singles which were like really like heavy guttural in your face you know you want to rip someone's face off. The Past Is Dead was very catchy and I've got nothing wrong with catchy songs. I have a feeling it'll be amazing live along with every other song. Beartooth know how to do intense and like strong like four invoking lyrics they sound amazing like instruments vocals oh yes 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 if you ever get a chance to see Beartooth live go and see them I saw them with the Amity Affliction in February 2020 and I cannot wait to hear this album below performed live in terms of reactions on the channel only two non-Japanese bands got like music video reactions and that was Black Veil Bride's Crimson Skies and Of Mice Of Men with the audio for the song Levy. What I love about these bands and like the songs in general is Black Veil Brides and Of Mice Of Men are two bands that I fell in love with during my high school years and I'm so happy that they are still making music to this day and it kind of makes me so happy that high school bands are still relevant and they pretty much still sound the same with like a few tweaks and a bit of an evolution but yeah Black Veil Brides of Mice of Men I cannot wait for the new Black Veil Brides album which I believe drops now in October due to a couple of pushbacks and I believe of Mice of Men might be releasing another EP I'm unsure because the Bloom EP was their second EP and I've heard somewhere they want to release a third EP I'll take anything of Mice of Men and anything Black Veil Brides I want to see Black Veil Brides live, I haven't seen them live, but I've seen Of Mice of Men live twice now, both times with Aaron. I never saw them with Austin and that's kind of disappointing, but Aaron, yes, yes, yes. And I cannot wait to see both of these bands live in the future. On the channel, of course, recently I've been going down that Japanese like rabbit hole, and so four Japanese bands were kind of featured on my channel this month. Bandmade, No God Live, I picked that myself, and yes, Bandmade are amazing, like top to bottom, hands down, one of the strongest bands coming out of Japan. I also reacted to Scandal, I reacted to a live music video, and okay, if I thought they slayed in their music videos, they slayed just as hard live. And the two new Japanese bands, that's right, I do not know how I'm still coming across new Japanese bands, but you guys don't fail to like recommend these bands to me. They were Hanabi and Fate Gear. They are two very interesting bands. Go watch my reactions and you will see what I mean by interesting. But I feel the need to give them a second chance because some of you guys told me maybe check out these videos live and that's what I'm finding that sometimes music videos can be a bit too overproduced and you've got to listen to a band live. If you've got any like music recommendations, like reviews, reactions, albums, singles, like be it American bands, British bands, European, Australian, like Asian, so like Korea, Japan, China, all that, the comments is the place to go. 
because I want to make videos that you guys want to watch. On to TV and my main binge was Drag Race Down Under which announced its first winner as Kinamine. Spoiler alert if you haven't watched it, Kinamine won. And I was happy with any of these queens winning although my favourite was Art Simone who got bought back and I'm so happy that she made it to the final. Who doesn't love Drag Race? Recently I've gotten into binging like older series and like I'm binging two shows currently. The first one is Spooks and that is like a BBC like spy thriller drama. There are 10 seasons all on iPlayer here in England. I'm currently on season four. There is so much action suspense. You're constantly on the edge of your seat and I forgot how many like plot twists there are and how many like amazing like British actors have been in the series over like the 10 years that it was on TV. When it was on TV originally, I believe I started watching it season 8. And so I, I kind of watched earlier seasons, but now I can just sit there and binge all 10 seasons. If you want a good spy drama thriller, then check out Spooks. The second older series that I am binging, also on BBC iPlayer here in England, is called Hustle. And it is pretty much a TV show that takes heists to the extreme, they're very elaborate. And it's kind of like a modern day Robin Hood where you're rooting for the con men and con women to con all the rich people so that they can give money back to like the poor or the ones that have been kind of like done in by the rich guys. The heists are very elaborate and like I'm finding out that when I watched it on TV, I watched all eight seasons when it was on TV. Oh. Eight seasons is a lot. I'm currently re-watching season four, so I'm halfway through. All the characters are amazing, but I've got to talk about the heists. Because throughout the show, you see them, like, pulling it off. And you're kind of thinking to yourself, how do they do that? And then conveniently, at the end, they actually explain and show you how they did each element of the heist. And there are so many plot twists, because you go, oh, they did it this way. And then you watch it at the end, and you go, oh, no. I was not expecting that plot twist, but Hustle, great show, check it out. The only film that I've seen this month is one that I've been really hyped for ever since it got pushed back in 2020, and that is Fast 9. I am a massive Fast and Furious fan, I love the spin-off Hobbs and Shaw. It is one of my, it's not a guilty pleasure. I have no shame when I go, let's put on Fast and Furious, I own every single film. And I was just so happy to finally be able to go back to the cinema. Yes, I know I went last month when I saw like the anniversary of Total Recall with Arnie and that was amazing. But just to be back in the cinema, so not surrounded by people because they are still limiting the amount of people in a screening. But fortunately enough, I went to see it at Odeon, which is a cinema chain here in England. And the film was on every half hour, so there weren't that many people in each screening, which was very, very nice. I'm not going to spoil the story because, you know, I want people to go and watch it, especially if you're a Fast and Furious fan like myself. But yeah, okay, yeah. Fast and Furious, as each film goes on, it gets more and more elaborate and sometimes a little bit silly when it comes to what they do with cars and like all like the tech and I'm like, would you be able to pull that off in real life? Probably not, but because it's Hollywood, you can pull off anything. John Cena is a really good addition to the cast. He is, like the minute he is on screen, you're like, oh, he should have been in this franchise like a lot, like why, why is he only just being put in the franchise now? But it does fit in with the story. I love his character. John Cena, don't know why I did it like that, and I cannot wait to see him in Suicide Squad. Also, I'm happy that Charlize Theron, I can never pronounce her name right, is actually back with less dreadlocks because I actually fell in love with her character when she was first introduced. Ah, oh, there's drama, there's cars, there's action, there's laughs, there's drama, lots of cars. Check out Fast and Furious 9. If you want to know what manga I have been reading or I have picked up the month of June, you can check out my June manga haul over on my second channel, MijiGirl94. I will leave a link in the description box below and I will try and leave a link at the end of this video. On to the final category, which is video games. And over the past couple of months, I've been really into buying like 3DS and DS games and that is no exception now. The first game I re-picked up is Pokemon Omega Ruby. This was like the remake of, well, Ruby, which came out, I believe, on the Game Boy Advance. I actually had it on the Game Boy Advance, and I actually had this when it was released originally, but once I completed it, I sold it. 
but I'm kind of going for like a Pokemon binge. If you watched it a couple of months back, I picked up a lot of Pokemon games. And kind of with like the fact that they're bringing out the remake of Diamond and Pearl later in the year, I kind of wanted to go back and like play like the remake of this game before those games came out. Ruby and Sapphire were probably for me some of my favourite Pokemon games. They had some of my favourite starter Pokemon. Good story. Yeah, Pokemon Omega, Omega Ruby, however you want to say Omega, Omega, Tomato, Tomato. Pokemon, always a winner. And the second and last game that I picked up came out on the DS, and it is Dragon Quest Sentinels of the Starry Skies. For me, hands down, this is one of the best Dragon Quest games out there. I don't hear enough people talk about this game. Yes, people talk about the franchise, and there are a lot of games in the series, but this is perfect there is just so much like character customization you can change like your classes and there's like lots of well if you've played any of the dragon quest games like you can kind of level up skills within classes to give you like more abilities and you kind of want like a really well-rounded team but amazing story like amazing characters like customization i highly recommend checking out like sentinels of the starry skies if you're a fan of the Dragon Quest series. Again, I had this game when it first came out, but then I probably then I sold it. And so I paid a lot of money for this game because turns out it ain't cheap, just like Pokemon. Dragon Quest. A good game. The final, final game I'm gonna talk about is one that I re-downloaded, and that is Shadowverse. Yes, that's right, it's the card game that's kind of like Hearthstone. Except the con the deck building is a lot more, I would say, complex than Hearthstone. There is like a lot more like lore when it comes to this, and you kind of have to pick cards strategically. There are kind of more, I would say, win conditions with Shadowverse than with Hearthstone. Similar format, you know, each turn you get like well, it's like gems and diamonds and mana. No, that's magic. But so there's no mana cards like there is in Magic, so you don't have to worry about that. But there is a lot more writing on the cards, like text, and you've got to read it because you want to kind of do the best combos to beat your opponent. I have played this game in the past, and it's one that I download and then I delete, I download and I delete, and now I'm going through like a re-download phase. I think the reason I've re-downloaded it is because I currently, when I got my new phone, I uninstalled Hearthstone because I wasn't really a fan of the current meta, and I was kind of missing a competitive like card game, so I re-downloaded Shadowverse. I'm still playing like a uh, magic like MTG Arena on my laptop, but I can have Shadowverse on my laptop and my phone and the two accounts link, so it's like winner winner, chicken dinner. If you like card games, then check out Shadowverse. So there we have it guys and girls of the internet, that was just some of my June favourites. I hope you guys learned something about me and my wild taste and how out there I am. In the comments below I'd love to hear you know some of the things that you guys have been like obsessed with or like fallen in love with the month of June, the comments is the place to go. Let's just wrap up this video before I continue to ramble. If you'd like to support me and the channel in the future you can by clicking like to show me some love. You can click subscribe and tap that bell to be notified of when I upload on this channel. At the end of this video you can check Check out my last two videos or playlists depending on what mood I'm in when I'm editing this. Until next time, I am Beth. Goodbye.